An organization is deploying a complex cryptographic infrastructure to secure its communication channels. What would be the most suitable cryptographic solution for ensuring secure key exchange over an untrusted network? Is it A, triple DES? Is it B, RSA? Is it C, Diffie slash Hellman? Or is it D, AES? You know, five seconds. And the correct answer is C, Diffy slash Hellman. Diffy slash Hellman is a key exchange protocol designed for secure key exchange over an untrusted network. It allows two parties to agree on a shared secret without exchanging the secret directly. Consider two entities wanting to establish a secure communication channel over the internet. Diffy slash Hellman enables them to agree on a shared secret without exposing it during the communication process, enhancing security. And now for the incorrect answers, Triple DES. While still secure, Triple DES is not a key exchange protocol, but rather a symmetric encryption algorithm. It does not provide the same level of secure key exchange as Diffie slash Hellman. RSA is an asymmetric encryption algorithm useful for digital signatures and encryption, but not specifically designed for key exchange over an untrusted network. And AES is a symmetric encryption algorithm and does not address this challenge of secure key exchange over a non-trusted network. And for the next question of our exam, question number two. And the question states, in a highly regulated environment, an organization must ensure that cryptographic keys used for securing communication are stored securely and can be audited for compliance. What cryptographic tool is most suitable for this purpose? Is it a trust trusted platform module or TPM? Is it B, hardware security module or HSM? Is it C, key management system, or is it D, secure enclave? You know, five seconds. And the correct answer is B, hardware security module, or HSM. HSM are dedicated hardware devices that provide secure key storage and cryptographic functions. They are ideal for environments with strict regulatory requirements offering both security and audibility. Consider a financial institution needing to comply with regulatory standards. An HSM can securely store encryption keys used for financial transactions and provide audit logs for compliance purposes. And now for the incorrect answers, whilst TPM or Trusted Platform Module offer secure storage and operations, they are typically integrated into a computer's motherboard and may not provide the same level of physical security as an HSM. Key management systems facilitate key lifecycle management, but may not offer the same level of physical security and compliance audibility as an HSM. And secure enclaves isolate critical operations, but they are not specifically designed for secure key storage and audibility. And for the next question of our exam, question number three. And the question states, an organization is concerned about potential vulnerabilities in its cryptographic algorithms and wants to ensure a robust level of security. Which factor is crucial in determining the strength of cryptographic algorithms? Is it A, algorithm popularity? Is it B, key length? Is it C, encryption speed? Or is it D, vendor reputation? You know, five seconds. And the correct answer is B, key length. The key length is crucial in determining the strength of cryptographic algorithms. Longer key length generally provide a higher level of security by increasing the complexity of cryptographic operations. Consider the AES algorithm with a 256-bit key length compared to a 128-bit key length. The 256-bit key length offers a significantly larger key space, making it more resistant to brute force attacks. And now for the incorrect answers, the popularity of an algorithm does not necessarily correlate with its security. Security depends more on the underlying mathematical principles and key length. Encryption speed is an operational consideration, but does not directly determine the strength of the cryptographic algorithm. And whilst a reputable vendor is essential, the strength of a cryptographic algorithm is independent of the vendor. And for the next question of our exam, question number four. And the question states, an organization is implementing a comprehensive cryptographic strategy to secure sensitive files stored on different servers. What cryptographic solution is most suitable for ensuring that each file remains confidential and can be individually accessed based on user roles? Is it A, full disk encryption? Is it B, partition encryption? Is it C, file encryption? Or is it D, volume encryption? You know, five seconds.
And the correct answer is C, file encryption. File encryption allows individual files to be encrypted and decrypted independently. It is suitable for securing sensitive files stored on different servers whilst enabling access based on user roles. Consider server hosting multiple files with varying levels of sensitivity. File encryption enables each file to be individually encrypted, ensuring that only authorized users with the necessary decryption keys can access specific files based on their roles. And now for the incorrect answers, full disk encryption encrypts the entire disk, limiting the granularity for access control at the file level. Similar to full disk encryption, partition encryption does not provide the required granularity for individual file access control. And volume encryption, whilst providing more granularity than full disk or partition encryption, it may, not st may still be too broad for securing individual files. And for the next question of our exam, question number five. And the question states, an organization is deploying a cloud-based service that requires secure communication between its servers and clients. What cryptographic solution is most suitable for ensuring the confidentiality and integrity of data transmitted over the internet? Is it A, asymmetric encryption? Is it B, symmetric encryption? Is it C, key exchange? Or is it D, transport layer encryption? In our five seconds. And the correct answer is D, transport layer encryption. Transport layer encryption, such as SSL slash TLS protocols, is specifically designed for securing data during transmission over the internet. It secures confidentiality and integrity of communication. SSL slash TLS protocols are commonly used in cloud-based services to encrypt data during transmission, safeguarding sensitive information from potential eavesdropping and tampering. And now for the incorrect answers, whilst uh, asymmetric encryption has its place, it is generally more computationally intensive and may not be the most efficient choice for securing the entire communication channel. Symmetric encryption is efficient for bulk data encryption, but securely distributing the shared key over the internet can be challenging. And key exchange protocols facilitate secure key sharing, but do not directly address securing the entire communication channel over the internet. And for the next question of our exam, question number six. And the question states, an organization is implementing a secure communication protocol that requires both confidentiality and authentication. Which cryptographic solution is most suitable for achieving both objectives? Is it A, symmetric encryption? Is it B, asymmetric encryption? Is it C, hash functions? Or is it D, key exchange? You now five seconds. And the correct answer is B, asymmetric encryption. Asymmetric encryption provides both confidentiality and authentication. It uses a pair of public and private keys, allowing secure communication and verifying the identity of the communicating parties. Consider a scenario where users want to securely exchange information over an untrusted network. Asymmetric encryption ensures the confidentiality of the data and verifies the authenticity of the sender using digital signatures. And now for the incorrect answers, while symmetric encryption ensures confidentiality, it does not provide inherent authentication mechanisms. Hash functions are used for data integrity but do not offer encryption or authentication features. And key exchange protocols facilitate secure key sharing and they are not directly responsible for achieving both confidentiality and authentication. And for the next question of our exam, question number seven. And the question states, an organization is concerned about potential attacks targeting cryptographic keys stored in hardware devices. What cryptographic tool is most suitable for protecting these keys against physical attacks? Is it A, key management system? Is it B, secure enclave? Is it C, hardware security module or HSM? Or is it D, trusted platform module or TPN? You now five seconds. And the correct answer is C, Hardware Security Module, or HSM. HSMs provide dedicated hardware protection for cryptographic keys, making them resistant to physical attacks. They are specifically designed to safeguard sensitive key material. Consider a scenario where an organization stores encryption keys for financial transactions. An HSM protects these keys from physical tampering, ensuring the integrity of cryptographic operations. And now for the incorrect answers, key management systems facilitate key lifecycle management, but may not offer the same level of physical security as an HSM. While secure enclaves isolate critical operations, they may not provide the same level of physical protection as an HSM. 
and TPMs or Trusted Platform Modules offer secure storage but may not be as dedicated to protecting keys against physical attacks as an HSM. And for the next question for exam, question number 8. And the question states, an organization wants to establish a secure communication channel between two servers and efficiency is a critical consideration. Which cryptographic solution would be the most suitable for achieving efficient, secure communication? Is it A, ECC or elliptic curve cryptography? Is it B, RSA? Is it C, AES or advanced encryption standard? Or is it D, Blowfish? You have five seconds. And the correct answer is A, ECC or elliptic curve cryptography. ECC is known for providing strong security with shorter key lengths, making it more efficient in terms of computational resources. It is well suited for scenarios where efficiency is a crucial factor. Consider a scenario where two servers need to exchange real-time data. ECC allows for strong encryption with smaller key sizes, reducing computational overhead and improving efficiency. And now for the incorrect answers, RSA provides robust security but typically requires longer key lengths, potentially impacting computational efficiency. AES or Advanced Encryption Standard, whilst efficient for symmetric encryption, AES is not specifically known for its efficiency in key exchange in comparison to ECC, and Blowfish is a symmetric encryption algorithm and may not offer the same efficiency as ECC for a key exchange. And for the next question for exam, question number 9. And the question states, an organization is deploying a next generation firewall or NGFW to enhance its network security posture. What security control is most associated with the NGFW's capability to identify and control application layer traffic? Is it A, Intrusion Prevention System, or IPS? Is it B, Deep Packet Inspection, or DPI? Is it C, Stateful Inspection, or is it D, Packet Filtering? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, Deep Packet Inspection, or DPI. DPI is a key feature of NGFWs, allowing them to analyze and control application layer traffic by inspecting the content of packages. It provides granular control over network traffic based on applications. Consider a scenario where an NGFW needs to identify and control specific applications such as social media or file sharing. DPI enables the firewall to make decisions based on the actual content of the traffic. And now for the incorrect answers, IPS, or Intrusion Prevention Systems, focuses on preventing malicious activities, but may not have the same level of granularity for application layer control. Stateful, ins stateful inspection tracks the state of active connections, but may not inspect content at the same depth as DPI. And packet filtering provides basic control based on header information, and may lack the ability to inspect content at the application layer. And for the last question of our exam, question number 10. But before that, ladies and gents, don't forget to drop a sub and share this video with your friends. And now back to our exam, a technology company is developing a secure software update mechanism for its widely used applications. They want to ensure that updates come from a legitimate source and have not been tampered with during transmission. What cryptographic technique is most appropriate for this purpose? Is it A. Digital certificates? Is it B. Code signing? Is it C. Public key infrastructure or PKI? Or is it the hash functions? In our five seconds. And the correct answer is B, code signing. Code signing involves digitally signing software with a cryptographic key to verify its authenticity and integrity. For a secure software update mechanism, code signing ensures that updates come from a legitimate source and have not been tampered with during transmission. The technology company signs each software update with a private key and users verify the signatures using the corresponding public keys. This guarantees the authenticity and integrity of the updates. And now for the incorrect answers, whilst digital certificates are part of PKI, they are not directly used for signing software package updates. Public key infrastructure is a broad fr framework that includes digital certificates and keys, but it's not the specific technique for ensuring the integrity of software updates. And hash functions, hash functions ensure data integrity and do not provide mechanisms for verifying the source of authenticity or software updates. Ladies and gents, this is the end of our exam. If and only if you found this video informative, make sure to drop a sub and share this video with your friends. I hope you found this video useful and I will see you guys next time.